Today, you're going to learn how to enter budgets and generate budget reports for your organization in QuickBooks. So I'm excited about this. But before we get started, I'd like to show you how you can engage today. I know somebody's already turned on the closed caption. If this is your first time here at TechSoup, if you need the closed caption, just tap on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. This is being recorded. You're gonna get the recording. You're gonna get the slides all within 48 hours. Maybe by tomorrow, we'll see, but definitely in 48 hours. And if you have something that you'd like to share, make sure you share it with us and hashtag TechSoup. I'm gonna move out of the way because I know this is gonna be super, super packed. You've already met our presenter, but I just wanna say a few things about him, Greg Fossum. He is no stranger to TechSoup. He is amazing. You're gonna enjoy this, but he is the president of QuickBooks Made Easy. I'm Aretha Simons, a webinar producer. I'm going to move out of your way and turn this over to Greg. Have a great webinar, everybody. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm. Let me share my screen here real quick. Uh, and there we go. So um, first thing, uh, just to kind of say, hi, uh, I am uh, a CPA uh, with an accounting practice in QuickBooks. Uh, I have a firm here in Atlanta, Georgia. We do 990s. We do um, audits. We do regular bookkeeping. All we do is uh, nonprofit work. And then I also own a company called QuickBooks Made Easy. And all we really do at QuickBooks Made Easy is uh, teach people how to use QuickBooks if they are in the nonprofit space. So it's not just me that does this. Um, I have a team with me. And uh, two of the people on that team are on the line right now. One of them is Paige Hutchin Garcia. Uh, Paige, if you want to say hi to everybody. Or not, Paige. <laughs> Paige remains very busy. Everybody. <laughs> there we go. All right. So the thing that Paige is doing a lot of these days is migrations. So those of you that are using QuickBooks Desktop, um, which is this program right here. We are going to look at this and how to budget in this today, but I will tell you that um, all signs point to this thing going bye-bye. It's just a matter of time, and everybody is going to be in QuickBooks Online, which looks like this. And we have a service uh, through TechSoup that will migrate you from the desktop to the online edition and uh, so uh, we have a discounted price through TechSoup. So you definitely want to take a look at that because eventually that's where you'll be moving to. But anyway, that's Paige. And then do we have anybody that's a house of worship here? Go ahead and put something in the poll. If you are a house of worship, a church, a synagogue, a mosque. Um, no, the cloud-based isn't going away, Tammy. Um, uh, it's Tammy's a church. Who else is a church? Jackie's a church. Janine's a church. Lisa, there's a number of you. So um, uh, Barbara, why don't you go ahead and say hi. Barbara is our church lady. Uh, and I will show them your little product that you have on here. But go ahead and say hi to everybody. You might recognize some of them. Hey, everybody. Glad to be here. Yeah. So she uh, is a uh, all about churches. Uh, and um, if you go to our courses and training, and you go to webinars, the way that you set up houses of worship is so completely different uh, that we actually have a webinar coming up on September the 20th and then the, on September the 27th. September 20th, it's a two-day webinar, two and a half hours a day for two days for those using the desktop, and then again on the 27th for those people using online, okay? And then for the rest of you that aren't churches, uh, we have our three-day webinar series coming up at the end of October, first week of November. But anyway... Um, enough of that. Uh, let's get into, oh, everybody don't ask questions, put it in the chat. Oh, if, unless the, que if you have a long question, put it in the Q and a and both Barbara and Paige Aretha, make sure they're both, um, upgraded to host or co-host. I mean, uh, uh, both Barbara and Paige will be able to um, answer your questions if you put them in the Q&A. But if you have something that you want to just put in the chat, then I'll read it and I'll be able to answer it while I'm in the middle of talking. OK, so I already had um, a few people that um, asked some questions already. Um, so just kind of showing you here. Uh, let's see. Yes, it will cover the desktop and the uh, online version. RSBP volunteers said that. Um, and then I'm just trying to see who else had questions here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think 
Uh, the, yeah, uh, the Alpine Club. Um, will QBO allow me to compare financial performance against the budget as the year moves on? Absolutely, you'll be able to do a budget to actual. Uh, can you break down a budget by various cost centers or classes showing a budget per class? Yes, you can. All right. Uh, uh, would it be smaller list to ask who is not a church? I doubt it. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead and move on and just get started here. So, um, all right. So here's what we're going to go through. Or we're all about um, churches. Uh, and we have, how many church, How many organizations do we have on here now? What did I do with this? Hold on. Let me make this smaller. Um, here is... I want to see how many people we have. We have 289 people on this call right now. Um, so it's a lot of people, okay? Which is why we have two, um, we have Barbara and Paige in the background. So we're going to look at how to enter a budget in QuickBooks, both by uh, income and expense account only. But also when you do that, you have a decision to make as to whether you want to enter the budget by month, by year, or by uh, or by quarter even. So we're going to look at that. And then in addition to entering a budget just for an account, like the totals for salaries, the total for travel, I already have it. A couple of people ask, you know, can I do a budget by class, like a budget for each one of my programs or each one of my departments? And yes, you can. And we're going to take a look at that also. OK, um, by restricted grant, we're not going to look at that here, but it is something that you can do. Uh, we to take a couple of hours to go through tracking grants. Uh, and then we're going to look at reporting for you. So um, my goal here is to teach you how to do budgeting, uh, both in QuickBooks Desktop, which is this program here, uh, as well as QuickBooks Online, uh, which is this program right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just ask a poll real quick to see who's using what. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll now. Um, if for some reason you're not seeing a poll, then go ahead and put your answer in the chat. But are you using QuickBooks Desktop? Uh, which again, for those of you that are kind of babes in the woods, this is QuickBooks Desktop versus QuickBooks Online. This is the cloud-based version of QuickBooks and yours might look like this when you open it up or it might look like this and have these little uh, boxes uh, on it. But um uh, let's see. Uh, we've got uh, most people have answered. We got about fifty people that haven't answered. Chuck, I see you have the cloud-based version. Um, Audra has QBO only because her desktop uh, was. Uh, yeah, they stopped. It was up for renewal. She didn't want to pay for it. Uh, the cloud-based version of QuickBooks is actually cheaper uh, than the desktop now because you can get the cloud-based version at TechSoup for one hundred and sixty dollars a year. Versus if you want the desktop version, you're going to have to get it through um, Intuit and it's going to cost five or six hundred. Um, so Joseph, yes, he's using QuickBooks desktop, but it's on a virtual machine hosted by our account. Let's go ahead and end the poll and take a look at what we have here. So we've got 30 percent of you are using desktop, whereas 60 percent of you are, do, are using online. So twice as many of you are using online as using desktop. And I'll just say again, um, it's just a matter of time uh, before this program, like right now you have to pay for it every year. It's a subscription based once a year, the desktop program, and it's like five, six, seven hundred dollars. But they have discontinued it all together in Australia and I think Great Britain. Uh, so um, I feel like it's just a matter of time before this is going to be gone altogether. So um, and I'm really sorry about that. But anyway. So uh, that's kind of what the DLO is. I'm going to uh, exit that poll there. All right. And we've been told that online is not as capable as desktop. Yes, that's what a lot of people used to say many years ago, but that's not true. Um, that is not the case anymore. QuickBooks Online is just as good, if not better, than QuickBooks Desktop. Uh, George, uh, can 501c7s get the TechSoup pricing? Aretha, you can sign in on this, but I believe the answer is no. All right. Um, uh, what is going to be gone altogether? Desktop. Yes, that's right. All right. So I am ready 
to start because we only have like 50 minutes left and I want to get into this. So if you guys could do me a favor and just hold your questions for a few minutes and let's get into budgeting. So two thirds of you are using QuickBooks online. One third of you are using desktop. So I'm going to try and do this by going back and forth. Okay. So um, first the desktop people. So I'm going to click uh, on um does anybody know where to go to enter a budget in QuickBooks desktop? Y'all put it in the chat because I'm sure some of you already do. We don't say yes. Just tell me where it is. Where would you go to enter a budget? Uh, the way that you can kind of remember it is this little bar up at the top. It has all these words on it. And one of the words says company. Well, it's not customers, vendors, employees, because those are kind of unique, specific things a budget would be for your entire company. So just that's how you can remember. You go under company here in the top in the menu bar, and then you're going to click planning and budgeting and set up budgets. This is where you go to set up your budget in QuickBooks Desktop. Okay, now I already have a budget set up to create a new budget. I'm going to click create new budget right there. Okay, now those of you that are in the online edition, I'm going to go over here. Does anybody who have the online edition know where to go to enter your budget? Um, Anne Marie, I understand what you're saying, but this is a free session. Okay. So Anne Marie, it's free. Okay. We will be able to do a lot. Okay. So Anne Marie, if you need me to give you, I can give you my phone number and you can call me. I don't want you unhappy. Okay. All right. So, uh, anyway, so here is the online edition. Anne Marie, are you still there? Anne Marie, Anne Marie. All right. Just want to make sure you're not upset. All right. So um, it's this gear over here or the word budgeting over there, okay? So um, I like to click this gear over here because honestly, these words over here, they keep changing every few months. It's quite obnoxious, but this gear ain't going anywhere. So I always go to the gear to set up my budgets. Another way to think about it is the gear. That's where you go to set things up. So I'm going to click gear and then I'm going to go over to budgets, okay? So here's where the budgeting is. And... uh. Unlike with the desktop, uh, where it just takes you to the last budget, here you get kind of a listing of budget. Here's where you go to create a new budget, okay? So um, now uh, I'm going to click create a new budget. But before I do that, I do want to cover the different ways of creating a budget. One way of creating a budget in QuickBooks Online is, say this is the budget for 2425. I could conceivably click it, duplicate it, and then make that my 2526 budget and then alter it. So you can copy a prior year's budget in QuickBooks Online and then uh, paste it onto the new budget in the next year. In QuickBooks Desktop, uh, you can't do that. They don't give you that option. So that's unfortunate. All right. But anyway, so uh, another way of entering a budget. Uh, is to just create a new one. So I'm going to cre create a new one right there. So I'm going to click create new. And then over here, I think I already showed you, but there was a create new button over here as well. Company, planning and budgeting, set up budgets, create new budget. All right. All right. So um, in QuickBooks Desktop, you can do a budget for the profit and loss or the balance sheet. Nobody does the balance sheet. So you just pick P&L. In the online edition, they don't even give you the ability to do a budget by balance sheet because nobody ever wanted it, okay? Now, then they want your time period here. What year do you want to do a budget for? Okay, I'll do a budget for the year of 25, 26, okay? Um, back over here in desktop land, um, you'll skip over this screen and then, oh, we already have a budget for that year. So let's do a new one, okay? And then so i should i should go back here so this is where you entered the fiscal year right here and then over here this is where you entered the fiscal year okay now um after you enter the fiscal year it wants to know do you want a no additional criteria budget a budget by customer or a budget by class if you do a no additional criteria budget that means you're doing a budget just by account how much is my salaries how much is my rent how much is my travel without regard to your various programs or departments or cost centers. If you want to do a budget that way, you'll use the class feature, okay? But we're just going to do the no additional criteria to start with. 
and then um, we will change it after the fact. Uh, we'll we'll go back and do it again later. Okay. So uh, so I'm just going to do a consolidated budget. That means it's a budget by account only. So if you want to do account only, you'll pick that. If you want to do a budget by class in QBO, you click subdivided and you select class. But we'll again, we'll do that in a minute. Right now, we're just going to do the consolidated budget. Then we click next. OK. Here's where you enter your budget. OK. I'm going to go to the online edition. I'm going to click next and finish. Here's where you enter your budget. OK. So, um, Carol says by account only or by classes, which is better and why? So if you don't use classes, Carol, then you can just do an organization wide budget. If you want to use, if you use classes to track your programs, I think it's better to do a budget by class. I refuse to tell you why until after I teach a little bit. So you're just going to have to wait. Okay. But what what about by locations? What about by locations? We can certainly talk about that, but let me teach the basics of entering a budget first before we get into that, okay? Uh, and the person who was upset, Anne-Marie, how are you feeling? Are you still upset? Anne-Marie, do you feel like I'm wasting your time? Anne-Marie, are you there? I just want to make sure she's not mad at me. All right, so, uh, okay, needing to teach class like you said, okay. Got it. All right. So here we go. So um, I'm going to um, show you how to enter a budget. Now, there are, um, first thing I did want to do this, I'm going to ask a poll. I'm going to run a, another poll here. I'm kind of curious to know um, when your fiscal year ends. So I'm going to launch this poll. Um, does your fiscal year end December the 31st? Does it end June 30? Does it end September 30 or does it end some other date? And if it ends some other date, then what I would do is put it in the chat. What I would do is put it in the chat. Charmaine says, when I'm in the Zoom, the screen is too big, but in the regular view, it's too small and the words are blue, blurred. Does anybody else have a problem seeing the screen besides her? Because I'm not sure what I can do to help you there. Okay. Uh, it never depends uh, what your grant is. I'm asking you what your fiscal year is for your organization, not for grants, okay? Shaunery, I don't care that you have grants with different years. I'm interested in your fiscal year for your organization, all right? Everybody else can see the screen fine, okay. All right, so um, I will tell you, let me just go ahead and end the poll so that you can, well, there's a couple of more people. Wow, there's 316 people in here now. Hey guys, how's it going? There were people that came in late. I'm Greg, let's learn budgeting. All right, so I'm going to end the poll and share the results. So you can see 62% um, of you have a December 31 year in, but there are 70 people, almost a third of you uh, that ended June 30 and you're probably waiting to get your tax returns done. So, um, but anyway, that's um, why uh, I think it's a good idea to not have a December 31 year end, by the way. I like having a June 30 year end or a September 30 or a June 30 or a, um, a, a, even a March 31. Because if your year end is December 30, and I know that's what 62% of you are, uh, it's going to be tough to try and get your taxes and or audit done during tax season because that's when us accountants are doing other work. So that's why I like people to say, you know what, I'm just going to change my fiscal year. It's very easy to change your fiscal year, by the way. Um, all you do is you simply vote at a board meeting. I'm going to change my year to June 30, 2023 from December 31. It'll be June 30. Then you send in a short year tax return for those six months. Um, and then you're done. When you send in that short year tax return, that's you telling the IRS you changed your fiscal year. You don't have to get approval. You don't have to fill out a form. You don't have to pay any money. It's very quick to do. All right. Um, yeah, you moved to 930, Catherine. That's even better. Anyway, so uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about, and I think I'm going to show you this, there's actually a couple of ways to uh, enter this budget. Some people like to enter the budget by year. Some people like to enter the budget by month. So I'm going to go into the online edition just so that, because there's more of you in the online edition, um, and show you what the difference between the two is. All right. So uh, if you enter your budget, 
me go back over here. If you enter your budget by year, what that means is whenever you run a budget to actual report, sorry about this. Whenever you run a budget to actual report, if you, if you enter your budget by year, the budget column will be fixed. In other words, this budget column will be 12 months of your budget, the whole 12 months. And the actual will just be the time period that you're asking about. So say we're in August, uh, we're in October now, we're asking for July, August, and September's financials for the board, because in this particular example, I begin July 1, my year end is June 30. But anyway, so we have three months of actual. So this is three months of actual, whereas the budget is the entire year. So that's what happens if you budget by year versus if you budget by month, if you budget by month, then your budget will also be the same. Hold on. Your budget will be the same period as your actual. See, this is July, August, and September of 24. The actual is 4901. The budget is only three months as well. Whereas in that other screen, uh, the budget was not. The budget was the entire year. Okay, so now that I've... Uh, thrown that out there i'm kind of curious to see um how do you budget uh time wise um do you want your uh do you budget by month do you budget by quarter do you budget by year um what do you want to see somebody's probably going to ask me what's better i'm going to tell you you probably want to have if you're in quickbooks desktop which is this program you probably just need one um budget by month um, because you can still get a budget by year. If you're in QuickBooks Online, you're probably going to want to have one that's by month and another that's by year. All right, probably going to have two. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and um, we've got 100 people that haven't answered yet. Always scares me when people aren't answering. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. This is just people telling me stuff. I would like to see the budget by month, but then also see the budget by year. So RSVP volunteer, if you are in QuickBooks desktop, just do a budget by month. You'll be able to see both. If you're in QuickBooks online, you'll need to have two budgets. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll here and share the results. And you can see uh, that more people, over half of you budget by year as opposed to by month. So we're going to look at this budget by year. Uh, and we're going to see what the problem is, because the problem is the actual is just three months, whereas the budget is the entire year. So it's hard to tell whether you're doing good or not. OK, I'll go back to the desktop version. If you budget. By month. Uh, I'm sorry, if you budget by year, then once again, uh, it's hard to tell whether you're doing good or not because this 55,000, let me zoom in to make it a little bit bigger for you. This 55,000 represents the annual budget for individual contributions, whereas this is just three months. So what do y'all think? Do we do good or do we do bad for individual contributions? If three months has gone by and we've gotten in 20, we've gotten in 8.9% of our budget, is that good or bad? What's your knee-jerk reaction? Is that good or bad? Is that good or bad? So it seems like it's bad. That's right. Seems like it's bad. It seems like uh, we did not uh, get near enough. What do you think this percentage should be if three months has gone by and our whole budget for the year is 55? What do you think this, this percentage should be? 25%, right? So what's the assumption you're making about how you get your donations in if you assume that's 25%? Um, what is the assumption, Larry? Grace, you get it. it. It We're assuming that there's no seasonality, Clarissa, that it just comes in equally through the year. Does it come in equally through the year? Do we get one twelfth a month, Carol? What do you think? Is that true? Heck no, it's not true. That's why budgeting by year is a little challenging, okay? So I will give you, those of you that want to continue to budget by year, that's okay, but I just want to tell you a couple of things. One is 
send this thing over to Excel before you give it to the board and add some notes so the board understands what in the heck they're looking at, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this over to Excel and you don't have to have Excel opened if you have QuickBooks Desktop. You can just open it up right in Excel. And I'll get back to QuickBooks Online in a second. So this is our annual budget. And I do the same thing in QuickBooks Online as well. Annual budget, there it is. And then I'm going to put the percentage. We'll say 25% because that's what people would expect. And then I just put notes, which I've done this before. Uh, give me a break. Wait till... December, you know, that's when all of our money comes in. Okay. So, um, that's that deal. Um, and, uh, let's see, uh, for those of you that have the desktop, I don't know if you know this already. Do you see these little, uh, empty columns? If you have QuickBooks desktop, you see these little empty columns. Do you guys have those? Tell me if the, yeah, do you like those or do you not like those? Uh, what do you think? Do you like these empty columns here between each column? So there's back and forth. Some people don't like them. Some people do. So if you are in QuickBooks Desktop, you can fix that. Before I send it over to Excel, there's a little button here that's called Advanced. Push that button, and you'll see something that says Space Between Columns. If you uncheck that and click OK, then when you send it over to Excel, uh, it will no longer have those columns. And that change is permanent. It's sticky. So no matter what report you in, you won't have that anymore. Okay. So um, that's the deal with that. Yeah, that's the tip of the day. Um, but anyway, uh, and if you are in QuickBooks Online um, and you've got this problem where, you know, you can't really tell what's going on, this is where you send it to Excel. It's this little thing right here, okay? So you're going to export. And you can export to Excel. You can export to a PDF. You can even export to Google Sheets, okay? Now, you may have to have QuickBooks Advanced before you can export to Google Sheets. And I'm going to ask Paige or Barbara, do you guys know? I feel like this is only if you have at QuickBooks Online Advanced, but I'm not sure. Do either of y'all know about that? You can just come on and tell me that you don't know. <laughs> it is um, advanced only. Okay. Page. Thank you. All right, cool. So I'm going to export this to Excel. I'll, it'll open up in Excel. And um, for some reason, unlike with um, uh, the online edition in Excel, with um, with the online edition, uh, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't give you this. So why didn't it do it? Here, let me click on this again. Oh, it's up here. They changed the way that works, and it always freaks me out. Okay, here it is. Uh, enable editing, and then all the numbers will appear. And there's no, doesn't do the double columns like it does on the desktop. But anyway, so the last thing that I want to tell you, if you do want to, if you do want to budget by year, and I know a number of you are like, dude, you're telling me to do it by month. So can we just get on with it? And I will, but I got to be thorough here. Some people want to budget by year. If you want to budget by year, I need to tell those of you that are kind of babes in the woods how to do it. Okay. So um, what some people think is that you would enter your budget total right here. If you do that, you're not budgeting by year, you're budgeting by month, and your budget column will be by month. It, you'll have a separate budget for each month. So if you want to budget by year, you have to put the entire budget. Uh, I can't even change that. I just have to change this. Actually, is there a clear here? Let's see if there's a clear. There is not a clear. Isn't that interesting? There used to be a clear button there. All right, so I'm going to clear that out. So that's not what you do. If you budget by year, you have to put the entire 12 months in one of these columns. Not the total column, but one of these. Oh, and by the way, if you think you're going to get smart and click this yearly, when you put in the number and you think, oh, I'm doing yearly. No, you're not. You're still doing it monthly. Okay. 
So that is not what you do. If you want to budget by year, the only way to make it work is to make sure this says monthly and put the entire budget in one of these 12 months. Now I'm going to tell you the right answer is either the first month of your fiscal year or the last month of your fiscal year. Now, one of those answers is wrong, by the way. So I'm giving you a 50-50 shot. So I want you to guess, would I put the entire annual budget in the first month of the year or would I put it in the last month of the year? Put it in the chat. A lot of people are saying last. Some people are saying first. All right. So I want you to listen extremely carefully to me because this is true whether you're an online or desktop so listen extremely carefully i'm about to teach you something i'm going to tell you something and then i'm going to go back to this screen okay and i'm going to re-ask the question okay when you are doing a budget to actual report and you put july 1 of 24 to september 30 of 24 it's going to get the actual column for the first three months of activity, it's going to look at the transactions for July, August, and September, and that's what it's going to put here. The budget column, the budget column, it's going to look at the first three months, July, August, and September. It's going to go to the budget column, and it's going to look here, here, and here, and it's going to just pick up these numbers, and those are the numbers that are going to be on the budget column, okay? So the budget column kind of assumes you're budgeting monthly. It looks at your date range, July, August, and September, and it copies that from here. So now I'm going to ask you again, should it be the first month or the last month if you want to budget your entire year? Joe, I hope you just mistyped. It's the first. It's the first month of the year, okay? So, and I actually already have a budget here, Um let me see. Let me, let me exit out of here and I'll just show you. Do you want to leave without saving? Yes. Okay, cool. So um, here is, I just want you to see, this is what your budget by year would look like. Right like that. Okay. Now it's the same exact situation in QuickBooks Desktop. You go to company, planning and budgeting, set up budgets. You click near new budget. But if you want to budget by year, you put the entire budget in the first month, okay? Yes, you'll get a recording of this today. All right, Liz, uh, you'll get a recording of this today. So that's budgeting by year. Now, if you want to budget by month, then what that means is you want to put something in every single month for a given line item. Now, this can be quite the pain in the butt, can it, okay? because you have to sit there and you have to type numbers in. In July, I think I get $2,000 because I don't get much in individual contributions. In August, I'm getting $5,000. In September, I'm getting $10,000. So this is, you know, kind of a pain in the butt. So let me give you a couple of things to help you. And of course, it's the same thing in QuickBooks Online. If you're budgeting by month, then you would need to put you know, a number for each month, $1,000 for July, uh, $2,000 for August. It's a lot of typing. It's a pain in the butt. So a couple of tricks. One trick is the copy thing. So if you have an expense like rent, let's say rent is $2,400 a month. I can type 2,400 and you see this copy across right here. You click it and it copies it all the way across. That's one way of making things kind of easy for you, all right? The same in the online edition. We'll go down to rent, and where is rent? Okay, so let's say it's $2,400 a month. Now you tell me, how do you think you copy it in the online edition? How do you copy it from the online edition, in the online edition, what do you think? Is the arrow on the left of the number? I think the arrow is on the right of the number and then it copies it across. Okay, so that's how you do that. All right, so um, that's how you enter. That's, that's a little trick. Now, another trick that I wanna cover is some people wanna know, well, gosh, what if I used 
my actuals from last year because that's already entered by month. And I use that as a starting point to create my budget. So you can certainly do that. So when you go to create a budget, I'm going to cancel out of here. Um, and I'm going to go to company and you can do this in the online edition to set up budgets. So what I'm about to show you, for those of you that are only half listening, is how to enter a budget by month using actual data from the prior year. Okay. I'm going to go to create new budgets. I'm going to pick the year I want to enter a budget for. I'm going to click next, next. And this is what I choose if I have the desktop. Create budget from previous year's actual data. I click it and I click finish and it gives me all the numbers from last year. Now, I don't have any numbers for last year for this one, so that's why it's zero. But if you did, they would appear here. In the online edition, let me go to the online edition. Uh, I'm going to exit out of here. And in the online edition to create a new budget, I go create new. And I pick what year I want to do it for. I'll click, consolid click consolidated budget. And then uh, let's see, actually, hold on a second. I must have missed something. Uh, let me try that again. Create a new budget. Uh, Consolidated budget. That's the format. That's interesting. If I click show reference data, it'll give me the data. Oh, that just says compare reference data. Um, let's pick, let's do a different budget. Let's pick one where I actually have numbers. Um, Okay, compare reference data. So it gives me the actuals for each and every month, but I don't see where I can copy them over. They took a feature away. You used to be able to copy the information over, and it looks like it's not so easy to do anymore, and I've got 20 minutes left, and I figure out it is under the drop-down reference data field. Ah, that picks the field that you want to refer to, but it doesn't see now I'm comparing 22. Um, so uh, I guess I have to refresh the screen here. Looks like they've done some changing. Compare reference data. There's the actuals for August of 23. Um, I suppose you could edit in a spreadsheet and send it over, but I don't really like that answer. Um, so I have to think about this. There used to be a button that allowed you to compare. It seems to be gone. As uh, in, in the square box by the gear, uh, it is not, this probably just shows. So no, I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. I think they removed it. They must have removed it because nobody needs it. Oh, well. So if you're in the online edition, you can see what the prior ones were, but you'll still need to sit there and retype them. Okay. So that's ridiculous. Okay. Was it on the previous screen bottom left? I'll look one more time and then we'll move on. Uh, create new. And no, this is just a create budget from scratch. From scratch. Um subdivided budgets that's our budget by class so i don't need that either yeah i'm shocked but they took it away they took it away all right but anyway so uh in the in the online edition it looks like you can't at this point create a budget from previous year's actual data but you can with the desktop version so let's take a, a look at a couple of reports now for our overall budget so um, in order to get a report, the first thing I do after I entered a budget is I would go to reports, budgets and forecasts, and do something called a budget overview. This will give you an overview of your budget. 
so that you can review it to make sure that um, uh, that all of the information is there. And this is 070123, 0630, 24, and refresh. So you'll have something that you can review. You can give it to the board. Um, from every single um, every single month, they can look at it. They can vote on it. Um, you can also just show it to the board totaled if you would rather. All right. So in the online edition, uh, the same place where you go to enter your budgets is where you get the reports from. Um, now, that's something that's different. With the desktop version, to enter a budget, you go to company, planning and budgeting, set up budgets. Whereas where you look at a report in on in the desktop, you go to reports, budgets, and here's your reports. In the online edition, it's all in the same place. You go to the gear, you go to budgeting. This is where you go to set up budgets as well as looking at reports. So I'm going to go ahead and click the drop down, and I'm going to click uh, uh, budget overview. It'll give me a budget overview. It assumes I'm doing it by um, month, even though this was an annual budget. So there's not a little button here like there is in desktop to collapse the columns. You have to go to this customize button right here in the online edition and go to show grid, click it, and click account versus total. And then here's your overall budget that you can give to the board. Okay. Now, what I would do is I would click Save Customization, and I'll just call it uh, Budget Overview 2425. Um, and what that does is it saves it. So now in the future, I actually don't have to go over to the gear and go to budgeting. And every time I want a budget report, I've got to create it here and then alter it. Now I can just go to reports. I can go to custom reports. This is where all my memorized reports are. And I'll click on this one and I can open it up at will. Now, the other thing uh, that you would want to do, I'll go back to the desktop, is obviously you'd want to get a budget to actual. So I'm going to go to reports and I'm going to go to uh, budgets and forecasts and I'm going to do a budget to actual. So first, I'm going to do a budget to actual for those of you that want to budget by uh, year. I'm going to click next, next, and finish. It's giving me the actuals and the budget for July with variances in dollar and percent. That's four columns just for the month of July. Then it does the same thing in August. Then it does the same thing in September. Quite a pain in the butt. A lot of columns. I like to make the show columns be total only. And then you can change the date range for whatever time period that you're interested in looking, looking at. And you've got your budget to actual, and you can memorize this as well if you would like, so you don't have to keep creating it. I'll just click memorize. Click okay. And then whenever I want to pop it up in the desktop, I go to reports, memorize, budget versus actual. Um, and it just pops up for me, okay? In the online edition, um, where would I go to get a budget to actual uh, report to begin with? Where would I go to get the budget to actual? Uh, and Larry, pay attention, because uh, I'm about to answer your question. Uh, where do you get a budget to actual report in QuickBooks Online? Anybody know? You got to go to where your budgeting is. You go to the gear, and you go to budgeting, okay? Because the same place where you enter the budget is where you get reports. So I'm going to do uh, one uh, by month. I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to click a run a budget to actual. And this one is just like the one in the online edition, in the desktop version. You have the actual, you have the budget, and you have the variances for the month of July. You do the same thing for the month of August. You do the same thing for the month of September. So again, I want to just look at the totals, although you might, this might be helpful for those of you that budget by month to give to a finance committee or perhaps staff looks at this, 
but for the overall board, we just want the totals. How do I go to where I can collapse these columns and just make the columns total only? Um, Debbie, you can go to reports once you've memorized it. Okay. Once you've memorized it. Uh, so yeah, you'll go to, we'll go to customize and we'll go down to show grid accounts versus months. And you click this and you make it accounts versus total. And then you'll get account versus total. Okay. Now this is something that sucks in the online edition. Okay. When it comes to budgeting by month, if you budget by month, and you do a budget to actual report for the first three months, the budget column will be the first three months. Now, if you say to me, Greg, I also want a budget for the entire year, then I will say to you, you're going to need to create a new budget. Okay. You're going to have a second budget in QuickBooks that's just by year. Fortunately, you can do that in QuickBooks uh, online. So I think I've already created one. So see, I have one by year and I have one by month. Okay. So I'm going to go to the one by year. That's when you're creating it to begin with. Sorry. I'm going to go to the one by year. I'm going to click budget versus actual. For the third time, where do I go to get rid of these, all these columns and just make it be total only? Anybody know? Got to go to the customize. Yes. Um, and then click here and total only. And now you've got, um, you've got your budget that's total only. Uh, and then on this one, if you make it by month, because you budgeted by year, when you make it by month, uh, the month will be the the actual column will be the three months, but the budget column will be the entire year. That's the difference between budgeting by year and budgeting by month. Okay, so um, uh, so Candice is telling me that you can go to reports and run what you need in the online version uh, when it comes to budgeting. So we'll click on reports. It depends upon if you go to standard. Uh, she's thinking that there's some budget reports here. Uh, I do see a budget versus actual and a budget overview. So this varies depending upon what version. So it looks like you can. Okay. So it looks like you can. So um, somebody did say to me, who was it that said that? Um, Carol, um, can you use the one by year and convert it to a month? Um, I'm not sure what that related to. Well, what I can tell you is that if you are in QuickBooks Online, and you want a report that gives you where the budget is just the same time period as the actual, that's a budget by month. If you also want a report where the budget is always the entire year, that's a budget by year. So you need both of these. Okay, you need both of these. The budget by month will have numbers in it for every single month, whereas the budget by year will not. Okay. Now, back to the desktop. Those of you that have been waiting the last five minutes to get to the desktop. So in the desktop, where do I go to go to budgets in the desktop? Somebody put it in the chat. Where do I go to enter budget in the desktop? Anybody know? There's a bunch of you on the call from the desktop. Where, where do you get your budgets from? I told you. Yeah, you go to company, um, planning and budgeting, uh, set up budgets. And um, let's see, these are where your budgets are. Now, if you budget by month, um, you can still get a column that has the entire year's budget on it. You can't do that in QuickBooks Online. That's why we have to have a separate budget by year. But in QuickBooks Desktop, even if I budgeted by month, which is what I did for this 23-24 year, you can get a report. Well, first I'll show you the other report. The main report is this budget versus actual. This report, this report, you can't, you know, if you change the date range, you know, you're only going to get um, three months of budget 
if you, um, whereas in the, if you run this report, let me give you this other report here. This is a, this is reports only available in the desktop. It's a profit and loss budget performance. So what this report does is it gives you for whatever time period you want. Uh, let's see, we'll, let's see, we'll do, I wonder if this will give me what I need. Okay. It gives me the actual, and then it gives me the budget for that same time period. In this case, just one month. Then it gives me the year to date, actual, the year to date budget. And then it gives me the entire year's budget. And you can send it to Excel to change it around. But this kind of report, it's called a profit and loss budget report. You can't get in QuickBooks Online. And again, the advantages of this is that I have a budget to actual for the time period I want to look at, but I also have the entire annual budget on the same report. Okay. Um, uh, how do you set up a budget by month if the only budget numbers provided are annual? Well, you're, Rod, you're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to go into company and uh, you're going to have to decide. So we'll create a new budget. And this would be the same for those of you in QuickBooks Online. If you tell me, oh, the person only gave me a total. Um, let me go back here. The person only gave me a total or the committee only gave me a total. Well, you're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to say, okay, well, if the total budget for the year is 120000 for salaries, I'll put that here and I could divide it by 12 on a calculator, but instead I'll just click the divided arrow, push 12, and then push the tab button. And then I'll click this and copy it across and look at that. Then you've copied the whole thing. Okay. Um, somebody else, Janice said, use uh, a last year's numbers. Yeah, you have to figure it out. Now, um, in terms of the, um, you know, literally how it would work again, you push 500 for the year, divide it by 12. I'm using QuickBooks as a calculator. I click tab, I get this number, and then I copy across, okay? Now, can anybody see a problem with this? Anybody see a problem with what just happened here? Yeah, there's a four cent rounding error. So I will have to take one of the 12 months and I have to lower it by four cents so that it'll give me what I need. That's one advantage that the online edition has, because when I go to do a new budget in the online edition, what I can do, if I do the same thing, I go down here to where postage is. Now, if I put 500 and divide it by 12, then copy across, I'm going to get that same problem here where there's a rounding error of four cents. But what I can do instead, this is what's cool about this. If you want a budget by month, you can take yearly and you can say, I want the budget to be $500. And then you can go back to monthly and you can see that it automatically fixed it for you, does the rounding for y'all. What do y'all think about that? That was pretty cool. Did y'all know that? Do you need any questions about that? Yeah, I think that's really cool. Uh, so I'm clear. Did you understand you to say you cannot do a budget and show yearly actual last year's actuals in the online version? No, I never said that. You can you, you can see last year's actuals in the online edition. You can in the desktop as well. So if I do the budget to actual here in the online edition, what I was saying you can't see the current year's total budget, Candace, in the online edition. I didn't say you can't see last year's actual, okay? So I would basically just customize this. Actually, I'm sorry, go to customize over here and make this total. And then if you wanna see last year's actual, basically you just need to add, you need to make this two years long run report. Now it's two years long, go to customize. 
and let's see if it can make it by year. No, it can't make it by year. I think what you're going to have to do um, is you are going to have to wait a second. I think I have another option. Nope. Nope. You're going to have to take two different reports and send them to the same place. So it looks like in QuickBooks Online, it looks like the same problem is existing. It looks like we can't get the current year and the prior year together without them being added together. And I don't like that. We want them separated out. Okay. Same question as Gen Reach. Now I got to go all the way up to find where Gen Reach is. Okay. If programming fundraising is seasonal, do you recommend trying to put the monthly numbers in with relation to the timing? Yes. Yes. I want it by month and I want you to enter the transactions in relationship to timing. I absolutely do. So I've got just a few minutes left. I've got one more thing I want to teach you. Uh, and this is it. Um, if you are using your class list to track your programs, and that's what you're supposed to be doing. If you're not doing that, then you need more training in QuickBooks. Unless you are a church. Churches do not have programs. They don't use classes. But everybody else, here's where you enter your expense account. Here's where you enter your either program, admin, or fundraising right here. All right. So you should be using your classes to track your programs. If you do that, both in the online and the desktop, I'm going to go to company, planning and budgeting, set up budgets. I'm going to click create new budget. I'm going to pick the year. I'm going to click class. And then it allows me to do a budget by class. In other words, a budget for each program. If you do a budget for every single program, and that's what I did here, it's the same window. I filled out all of the information for fundraising class. I click save. I go over here. I go to the guidance center program. I fill it all out. I click save. I go to the next one, Synergy Conference. I fill it all out. I click save, okay? If you do that for every single one of your programs, as well as admin and fundraising, then you don't need to do an organization-wide budget. Your class budget is also your organization-wide budget. So let me show you what this looks like when we look at it on a report. Reports, budgets and forecasts, budget versus actual. I'm going to pick the one that says account and class right there. Account and class. I'm going to click next. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to add all of my class budgets together and give me columns by month. That's stupid. If I'm budgeting by class, by program, I want or by cost center, I want the report to be that way. So I'm going to click account by class, not account by month. I click next. I click finish. And now I've got budget for the guidance center and actual. So I got actual budget for the guidance center. For Synergy Conference, I have actual and budget. For AWARE Campaign, I have actual and budget. This is great for a finance committee to look at. You can filter it so it only gives you one program. So each program administrator has their own budget to actual report. Here's admin and here's fundraising. And here's a total column right there. So if I click class and total only, now I've got my budget to actual for the board of directors. Okay. So if you budget by class, then you don't need to do an organization-wide budget. This functions for both, all right? So going to the online edition, it works the same way. I go to the gear. I go to budgeting. I say that I want to create a new budget. I pick the year. Instead of clicking consolidated, I click subdivide by class. And then I pick the classes I want to enter a budget for, and I'm going to select every single one of them. If I do that, then I won't need an organization-wide budget. I click Next, and here's my windows. It looks just like it did in the desktop. You pick the Guidance Center. You put in your numbers. You click Save. You pick the next one. You put in your numbers. You click Save. 
Let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to go to one that I've already created. Here's one I've already created. So this is the guidance center program with its numbers here. I'm going to switch over to the synergy conference and you'll see the numbers are different. I'm going to switch over to the aware campaign. You'll see the numbers are different. The admin, see the number are different. Fundraising, numbers different. Okay. So um, that is the budgeting by class. Let's take a look at it on reports. Um, I'm going to go to the drop down. I'm going to click budget versus actual. And unlike the desktop, it automatically gives it to me by class. There's the guidance center actual to budget with variances. This is a synergy conference with actual to budget by variances. This is the aware campaign with actual to budget by variances. There's total programs, here's admin, here's fundraising, and there's the total. How do you think I would collapse this for the board? Because if I'm doing a budget by class and I budget for every single class, I just told you board probably is not going to want to see this. How do I make it total all the classes together? Yeah, I got to click on customize and I got to go down to this grid and I'm going to click um, uh, uh, accounts versus total and it gets rid of the classes. And then I've got the normal thing that I would give to the board. I would probably save customization and we'll call this the uh, budget to actual for board. Uh, did not do that right. <laughs> uh, budget to actual Board. and click save and then you go to reports and we go to the custom and here's budget to actual for board and it pops up whenever you need it okay so i'm a big proponent for budgeting by class just got a couple more things i want to tell you about and then we're going to take some questions and then we're going to finish up um, the one uh, thing that I want to make sure that you understand or that you are aware of is that um, we have a three-day webinar series, two and a half hours a day for three days. If you like the way I teach, but you feel like this was a little quick and you need a lot more training, this is for you. It's normally $300. We're going to give it to you for $40 off. It's three days two and a half hours a day. For those of you using desktop, it's happening October 31, the first and the second from two to 4.30. For online users, it's happening November the 7th, 8th and 9th from two to 4.30 again. Um, we'll take plenty of breaks. There'll be music. It'll be fun. Um, but anyway, uh, the code to get the $40 off is TS40OFF. Tech support 40OFF. All right. And uh, you just go here to sign up for it. You go to quickbooksmadeeasy.com. You click on webinars. And here is the three-day series right there. You can click and read all about it um, and read about all the stuff that's covered. Those of you that are churches, um, please, please go to webinars and go to the one that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Actually, it's next week for desktop users and the week after that. Barbara will be teaching that. It's incredible. We teach you how to track your designated funds so that you know the balances in all your funds without screwing up your books. Um, but it's a soup to nuts training for those of you that are houses of worship. Um, does anybody have investments? Does anybody have a brokerage account with gains and losses and unrealized gains and losses and um, sales of stocks? And if you are trying to figure out how to track that stuff in QuickBooks, I just did a webinar on it, which you can get by going to webinars again under courses and training. And it's right here, tracking your investment accounts in QuickBooks Online and tracking your investment accounts in QuickBooks Desktop. It's 90 minutes. It is 
phenomenal. We also give you your own worksheet so that you can track your investments and make an easy journal entry once a month. One of the hardest things I've ever taught. Very proud of it. It's $99 um, and it's viewable for $99. We're going to give you $10 off. So for TS10 off, tech support 10 off, it's only $89 not uh, $99 and you can sign up for it there. So I'm going to ask um, questions. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask Barbara and Paige, if you want to make yourself live, and then I'm going to read some of these questions. Don't go anywhere folks. Cause we're going to stay on for a few minutes and get some questions answered. Um, how about budgeting capital spending? So in order to budget capital spending, you're going to need to have an expense account for fixed asset purchases or capital expenses that then you're going to have to back out. That's the only way to get a budget. That's the Alpine Club. Christina, can we re-watch the upcoming webinar series classes if we purchase them? Yes, you get the recording afterwards. You can watch them over and over again. How do you budget using, this is Tracy, how do you budget using a customer job or a project in QBO? Um, it's the same way that we did with the on uh, with the um a class version, uh, you click on here, you go to budgeting, you click um, create new, you click subdivide, and instead of clicking class, you click customers. You pick the grant that you want to budget for. Maybe you have more than one. I have a whole session on this. And it works the same way you enter your budgets. These budgets do not add to your overall budget. They're separate budget to actual reports and QuickBooks. We also have a webinar on that. Um, if you go to webinars, we did a live webinar on this. It's part of our tracking restricted grants webinar. And you can get it. I believe it's $99. This is a desktop one. This is the online edition one. Uh what else, uh, Paige, I'll do you first. Is there anything you feel like I need to mention? What are you thinking, Let's Paige? See. Well, we had we had one question, but I think you might have covered it real briefly earlier. Uh, we've had questions about if you budget for uh, budget for classes, Mm -hmm. Will it ultimately let you roll it up into an organization-wide budget? Yes. Yeah, I showed them how yeah. to do that, so that's for sure. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, Becky McKim wants to know if QBO will handle budgeting for subclasses the same as the parent classes. It does, yes. You can budget for subclasses just like you can for parents. That's right. Um, Ed Nickerson. Ed, how is it possible to create a budget, a report, not budget, showing rent, salaries, et cetera, for multiple years. Well, I mean, that's not really a budget thing, but um, what you would do if you wanted to do a comparison by year of your P&L, which is what you're looking for, you would just run a standard P&L, um, P&L, and then you would pick whatever years you're interested in. I'll do 7, 1 of 21 through... June 30 of 25. And then you see this columns display. You see how this says total only. They don't have this when you have a budget to actual report, but on the other reports they do. So I can just click um, fiscal years and click run and then we'll get what you want. Okay. That's for you, Ed. Uh, what else we got? Anything else page? And I'll move, move on to you, Barbara. I Doesn't don't see anything else on my side. All right. Paige, did you have discussions with the church people? <laughs> anything for you? Did uh, I? Yeah, I'm sorry. No, Barbara. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I had a couple um, really good questions in Q&A, but nothing that um, beyond what Paige had asked you about as far as missing anything. So All I'm right. excited to work with everybody, though, next week or the week after if they can be on the on the sessions cool and then the only other thing that i'll say is one of the things that we offer um and if you go to the uh, website quickbooks made easy and you go to tech support um you can sign up for tech support with us it's 
Well, actually, a year of tech support is usually you pick one under is four ninety nine. We're going to give you two hundred dollars off. We have a coupon for that as well, um, and it's right here. TSTS two nine nine, and it'll give you two hundred dollars off. Um, this particular thing is only good till the end of the week. Um, but when you have tech support with us, and I know a number of you do, what you do is you either email or you call, um, and we answer you um, either by email, by phone call, or we can set up an appointment. Either me, Paige, Barbara, or there's one other. Her name is literally Question. Um, and all four of us, all we do is teach nonprofits and work with nonprofits using QuickBooks. We do setup. We look over accounts. We answer individual questions. Uh, I do 990s, I do audits, anything you need to know related to your nonprofit. If you're using QuickBooks, um, that's what we're here for. All right. So um, I'm going to let um, Aretha take it back over. Thank you. I know we ran a few minutes long, but we still got what, 